weekend. This is we don't have to tell them yeah. that I wasn't. Uh, I didn't notice the time on the clock. We're two minutes late for reasons entirely outside of either of our control. That's right. It's the system. Yeah, we can blame the system. Yeah. So maybe we should replace this system. Big government. Big government. The economy. The NSA. Can we just blame the NSA and yeah. the FBI? Yeah, the NSA actually put us on a uh, on a two minute um, oh, delay, gosh. which is which is why we're coming to you late. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, on that note, we'll go ahead and get going. Welcome, everybody, uh, to another Unauthorized Caucus. It is Thursday. It is noon-ish, and it is caucus time. So uh, we're glad to be here with you today. Glad to uh, be back. We had uh, last week, we had a solo show because mm -hmm. um, you were out uh, sick. You're better now. So but you did great. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. I yeah. didn't mean to go as long as I did, but we ended up like there was just enough topic and people hopped into the chat. It just mm -hmm. took off. I was enthralled. <sighs> you were probably on, you know, yeah. sinus drugs and yeah. couldn't tell. Oh, this is great. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we got through it. There was a lot going on and it gave us uh, an, even an extra week to kind of dive into one of the topics, which like we've told you, um, We've got a lot of, uh, of topics that we'd like to cover moving forward, and we've actually received uh, at least uh, two different requests for um, topics. Hey, please cover this. I, I'm curious. I'd like to know more. So we're putting those onto the calendar, taking them into account, and you can always do that. Um, that's the reminder. Go ahead. First of all, wherever you are, like, share, and subscribe. If you're over on Rumble, hit the big green button, YouTube, the big red one, and the little notification bell. But send this link to someone. Tell them to log in and uh, watch the show. Uh, watch uh, the discussion and chime in on uh, one of our um, uh, one of our chats uh, functions down below, and uh, you can make sure that you get all the links by going to phyllislafley.com and signing up for the email list. So you should do those things. You should do them now. I, I mean, don't leave the chat. You know, don't leave the page, but go and do it now, and uh, you're not going to be sorry because I at least have a lot of resources that we're going to be plugging into the like. It's going to be a long list of resources today. Because we had time. I came loaded mm -hmm. for bear. So yeah. I have lots of things to talk about and share. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's it. What what do you have? What uh, you bring to the table? I today? got it all up here. Got it all up here? Yeah, oh, it's boy. all packed away in the uh, in the mind palace. There you go. Well, why don't you uh why don't you hit it? What's our uh what is our topic today, uh cohort of mine? What what are we gonna cover? Well, we uh for a few weeks now, we've been wanting to cover parallel economics or parallel economies. Um the kind of the idea that uh, in the face of the economy and uh, the system that we're dealing with, as the title says, uh, the system, which is a very uh, kind of a hard term to des describe. It can apply to a lot of things. But what we're talking about here is our system, the uh, both the economic and political system that we're dealing with today. Can we establish parallel avenues to that so that people like us uh, can, in good faith, put our money somewhere and know that we are not uh, funding people that hate us, essentially. Uh, I guess that's the short way of putting it. Um, yeah. You know, the, because it, especially over the last year with Target, Bud Light, all that kind of stuff we've mm -hmm. seen, oh, these people are deranged and are basing their brands and selling products based off of a uh, totally anti-natural, anti-Christian worldview. And I don't really want to give them money. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, that opens it up. And that's the and that's the discussion is I think that all of us feel this burden. This is something that I, I don't want to participate with these people anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I you know they're liars or this and that and the other. Which by the way, you talk about extra layers of lying. Like we all knew um, something was fishy there, but there was finally an actual report came through that Bud Light did in fact, despite the immediate like, oh no no, this wasn't an organized marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. They did pay Dylan Mulvaney one hundred eighty six hundred eighty five thousand yeah. dollars for that marketing campaign. He was a paid marketer mm -hmm. for them. Right. So despite the very vehement, like, oh, no, we didn't do that. They did pay him money. So I, I have, I'm left to wonder if that $186,000 payment marketing campaign was worth the millions <laughs> that they've now lost. Right. It's neither here nor there, though. That's just another a side note. But, um, yeah, but for me, this um, this topic really kind of comes into there's there are – I feel like the um, – the leap that we're finally making, people are realizing that the system is broken. They're kind of making that leap from understanding the traditional liberal versus conservative. And we talked about this kind of closely. So now so this is the what do you do about it episode. We've, we've made that leap where people have understood finally and kind of realized, oh, the, and I mean, there's lots of 
terminology around it, the, the Leviathan, the cathedral, mm -hmm. all of the different, it depends on how far down the rabbit hole you go with right. this kind of stuff. These things exist. There really is this mass conspiracy. It's not even a conspiracy. Like these are all connected. Mm -hmm. it, it's not a conspiracy anymore when federal bureaucracy and Walt Disney and the you know Southern California University Berkeley, these people all share the exact same ideology. And mm -hmm. it's, it's not a conspiracy anymore. It is just a massive ideological um, clump of people who have risen to the echelons of power in media, journalism and entertainment, in business, in banking, in government, in you go down the list and name it. And all of them are moving and hurtling certain sections of society, of mm -hmm. our economy, a certain direction. And it seems to be completely against the will of we the people, but they're up in charge. So what are we left to do about it? Right. I mean, it's not enough for us to just point and say lies, 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 lies. At right. a certain point, you have to have an answer, a response. That's kind of where we're left. And, and that was when we brought this up. My question, is that viable? Are, are there actually viable movements this direction? Mm -hmm. um, are we looking at any of them or are they still yet to come up? Um, particularly in worlds like banking and some of the others. I mean, mm -hmm. it's one thing to form a, a, a separate or a parallel um, media company right. to give some alternative to Disney. But is it an actual alternative? Are you really challenging Hollywood? Is it really mm -hmm. doing a good job? And then on some of these other fronts, it's just, it is a whole world of work. And the question is, is it viable for me? Is, is it viable? And then, okay, where do I go and do that? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, to me, that is the next leap for people who've been red pilled. There's another one of your phrases, Leviathan, red pill, cathedral. Yeah. If these are unfamiliar terms to you, shoot us an email. We'll, we'll give you a primer and we'll, we'll kind of you back you up. Yeah. yeah. We'll give you, we have a lexicon of all the, but for those who have been red pilled, who finally kind of realized, Oh wow, this is all connected. There is the system. We've kind of pulled back the curtain and realized who all these people are and that it's connected and that it's against us. Now, what do I do? Th this is the next conversation. Well, this idea of parallel economy. Is it possible? And then where is it? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very valuable to have. I think it's incredibly important for us to understand. And uh, I, there's, you know, it's for as, for as um, difficult as it might be, it's not really complicated, but it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Right. When I say that it's, it's, it's easy to, oh yeah, sure. But well, how do I actually do that? Right. That, you know, that's where we are. So that the, was, the, uh, that the, was kind of my backup of where I wanted to come in on this. So, right. I feel like uh, getting into the system and like, trying to disentangle when you're looking at the Leviathan, it's like, okay, where is this leftist ideology coming from? Where's the core of it? I think that's a really complicated issue. I think that uh, lots of people have different theories about where exactly the nexus of that is. Uh, so I think it's a, uh, that's why a lot of people jump to, okay, well, if we can't even identify where this is, like, is it in the media? Is it, um, mm -hmm. is it like in the universities? Is there some secret cabal behind all of it? Is it the Illuminati? Um, it's, you know, that's, that's much harder to answer than like, okay, well, how can I just set up my own parallel institution? So, um, well, what, what, what do you, th what, what do you think of the possibilities of setting up parallel economies? So just bottom line, giving the answer, I think that in some areas it is very doable and we're mm -hmm. watching it be done right now. Again, for instance, um, <coughs> pardon me, the uh, entertainment industry, for instance, entertainment and news. I think that we have already kind of crossed the Rubicon in that sense because mm -hmm. it has become, it's not even ideologically based. The news, CNN, has become so utterly ridiculous that it is now kind of normal to see people online, even normies, mm -hmm. you know, for the definitional sake, normies being not the red pilled people like you mm -hmm. and us and, and how that goes. It is normal to see people just mocking journalism because how ridiculous it has become. Mm -hmm. Likewise, on the entertainment side of the media spectrum, it's normal to see people mocking just how utterly destructive and stupid Disney has become. For mm -hmm. like, it's a it's a meme now. Disney has spent so much time and effort swapping out traditional characters from old school stories with the modern diversity, mm -hmm. equity, and inclusion version. Like how many white characters from back in the day can we make black? Right. And how many of these can we change? And how many of this? And it's not even for the sake of the story. It is at the expense of the story. We are shoving the inclusive metrics that we think we need to mm -hmm. hit 
into these remakes. Well, it's to shield the story and, because they, they they have no creativity. So well, that's the they, thing. they make the star African American or some other minority, right. and if somebody criticizes it, they're racist. Right. And it's not because these people just have no creativity. But even more than that, like it has we have sacrificed creativity on the altar of right. inclusion. So now the stories just suck. It's 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 mm -hmm. It's horrible. It's like this, like with Marvel, the more that we try to shove all of these things mm -hmm. in to make it like more girl power superheroes, mm -hmm. which I have no problem with female characters in the superhero mm -hmm. world. There, there always have been mm -hmm. no big deal. But when you ham fistedly do it mm -hmm. and you hire more and more writers that will do that and follow the DEI direction, you are sacrificing the creativity of just having a good story. And it gets so bad at a certain point, which some mm -hmm. places like Marvel, Disney, Star Wars, but doesn't Disney, Disney owns both of those. <laughs> Disney has done this to everything. And now it's just normal to see mm -hmm. people mocking how awful Star Wars has become, mm -hmm. mocking how awful Marvel has become. Right. And it's not even like I have to have a political per, uh, perspective on how awful the feminist overtones, blah, blah, blah. No, that was just a stupid story. Right. It didn't make sense. Right. People have really kind of made that leap. So when you see the um, daily wires of the world coming in with new kids programming, mm -hmm. with new this and that and the other, and f bringing a lower budget than Hollywood, who just indomitably can pay for anything, special effects to just blow your mind, mm -hmm. to see people get the funding to come up and then bring creative storytelling back to the forefront. We're not even trying to shove the opposite anti-DEI. Mm -hmm. We just want to make good stories again that also aren't filled with garbage mm -hmm. for our kids to watch. Those are really catching on. And right. I feel like there is a serious parallel economy that is working mm -hmm. before our eyes. People are making that leap, ditching Disney Plus, buying into Bent Key or Daily Wire Plus, ditching mainstream news and buying into mm -hmm. Newsmax or any of the others, whether it's a subscription or not. But in other worlds, unplugging from banking, for instance, that's a whole different ballgame. Right. Because now we're talking about a system that is entrenched in bureaucracy, in government, in the part of government that we can't change. Not that elections mm -hmm. aren't effective, but that's a whole different thing than just unsubscribing from one streaming service and subscribing right. to another. You can make a conscious choice to shut that out. Mm -hmm. You can't shut out the administrative state. Right. There are still laws and regulatory agents and tax agents that yeah. you have to deal with. So in, in different realms, yeah, some of these we're seeing it move, but in others, like the financial sector, that's a whole different fight on so many different levels. Is it possible? I think so, but that's that's a very high level of commitment and work right. from a lot of us to understand the direction we need to go and to move that way. So I, I think that it's a part of it is, we understand what a part of it is, but I'm not quite mm -hmm. sure we even know what that all involves, how we can exit this and, and move into a parallel economy in some of these other places. Right. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, it's the prospect of, okay, you don't like uh, Goldman Sachs, build your own conservative Goldman Sachs. Like, that is so beyond the realm of political possibilities right now uh, that, it, you know, even if that is going to happen, it's going to take like 100 years uh, for an institution like that to organically grow and replace the other one uh, on such a large level. Um, I think that two of the biggest obstacles towards creating conservative institutions that have the same level of economic power that the current ones have are regulatory capture, I think is one of the first ones, uh, and then ESG scores. To, to explain regulatory capture, that's a when you know a big corporation, for example, let's say um, who makes like soaps and stuff. What's what's the big uh Johnson and Johnson? Yeah, when Johnson and Johnson has like a big you know, overbearing control over the economy, and then they can lobby the government to uh, make new regulations about productions of soap. Mm -hmm. And then that adds a whole other hurdle for another start, uh, startup to come about. So that that really, it's, it's when the corporations are able to leverage the political process in order to protect their own assets that prohibit something like a conservative organization or just people with conservative uh, inclinations from starting their own business and then not you know, creating woke soap number 572. Um, I, and I think ESG scores are another big uh, problem with that because that, that the, what BlackRock and Larry Fink have done affects a lot of people uh, in a lot of, in a lot of big corporations, as well as a lot of investors. Um, because if investors and corporations start kind of deviating and saying, you know, giving money to, uh, well, it's like you, you, you got to get a full picture of what's going on here. Mm -hmm. It's all these companies that are tied up with BlackRock. BlackRock owns 
a large portion of a lot of companies, just hundreds and hundreds of companies. You know, most of most of the products that we consume on a daily basis, they are probably produced by a company that is owned 10% by BlackRock and 5% by Vanguard. Uh, and then on top of that, all of these companies own a lot of each other. So there is, in some ways, there is a massive ideological cartel in our economy that makes it very difficult for a uh, a new corporation to even be a player on the same level mm-hmm. as Apple and Target and Walmart and all these big ones. Like it's there, there is a massive gap there that um, that I don't think you can overcome through good old American entrepreneurship, you know, it, by itself. Um, which is which is tough to say, and and I think that this is something that it's easy to miss when you're looking at things purely economically, because uh, in economics it's like okay, well, you just undercut their prices and break the monopoly, yada yada yada. But when mm-hmm. the government has become so involved, uh, right. it makes it really hard to break through. It's like a glass ceiling, which is kind of a funny term to use here, you know, not in the feminist sense, but so. I don't think that it's exactly feasible for conservatives to just make their own Amazon. Make mm-hmm. their own J.P. Morgan Chase, you know, make their own Bank of America. I I don't think that can happen, um, organically. Which you know, and this really goes against uh, kind of my my past libertarian roots. But it's like I think because the government has caused so much of this problem, I think that uh, if somebody like Trump gets back into office, they need to be able to pump the administrative state full of their own people to push back against these diversity, equity, and inclusion people who have gotten into all these HR mm-hmm. departments, you know, establish new sorts of regulations, or even like, uh, you know, just, just say like, oh, this or that is discriminatory in some way, like, uh, like with how the Supreme Court cut, cut off con- uh, affirmative action. Mm-hmm. Um, doing things like that, you know, putting wrenches in the work of these progressive ideals that have gone all the way through our businesses and institutions, I think is what needs to happen. Because I don't think that we can create our own parallel you know, super giga giant corporations. Yeah. And I think that this is, and I mean, you're, you know, you knock on an interesting point that I I actually had a note on that I wanted to say something to the point of so much of this has been caused by government or allowed or ushered in by government. There really does need to be in part a governmental solution. Mm -hmm. And that's not outside of our control. You know, Mm I, we, um, just voting harder. I feel like that's always the answer for a lot Mm -hmm. of people when they, you know, you go to somebody, oh, what do we do about it? Oh, we just need to elect better people. And it's like, well, you got to give me more than that. Like, mm-hmm. I can't just vote harder. Like, what, you know, circle the square, you know, circle the little oval a lot harder. Like, it's, it's my vote does what my vote does. I've been doing that. And apparently there's not enough of us doing that to overcome not only this other group of people that believe differently than me in this country, but then shenanigans on top of that. Like, well, what do I do? Mm-hmm. Like, I can't just, elections aren't just going to get us out of this. No, that's right. But there is, elections aren't gone. There, there is still incredibly important things, especially at the more local level. Mm-hmm. There really is influence that you have over the electoral process. It really can gain you something. And again, all of a sudden, even if I can't get the White House and Congress switched over to just come in and gut the uh, Federal um, uh, Reserve Board or something like that, mm-hmm. I can potentially work my way up to that at the state level and get a state to divest from the system Mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. Well, that could start to make some waves and then another state follows and another state follows. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you realize from the bottom up, there is a sincere possibility at getting to a big enough stick you're swinging around. Mm -hmm. Even if you can't control the top down, you can from the bottom up make something. So make no mistake, there is an electoral response to this. Mm -hmm. And to your point, some of that's needed. This has to be addressed from a governmental level. Right. Um, which is like, it, it, it's tough because we believe mm-hmm. so much in free markets and right. Uh, but I, I think in so many ways, we don't have a free market today that, uh, right. if we're going to win the day through our morals and our values, it's going to require fighting on the level that we exist at today, rather than the level we wish we were at. Right. You know, it's not as simple as like, okay, well we, uh, get rid of regulatory capture and like deregulate, you know, I don't mm-hmm. think that's going to. Uh, even if we did do that the next day, you know, Target would once again be lobbying for those right. regulations to come right back in. It's a, it's a matter of using those regulations against the left rather than. Uh, and that's the, that's the other part of this is it, on a more practical level, um, that same kind of effect of, of local matters, maybe more um, 
I'm just funny. I'm looking over at the shelf and seeing a book called The Walmart Effect, and I'm now wondering <laughs> what that is. It's, it's, <laughs> this is the downside to sitting in a library. You get distracted and go, oh, I want to read that. Yeah. Um, on a more practical level, that that local movement is actually part of you know what you can do because that's the thing we need to make major change to your mm -hmm. point we've we've gotten here because of a lot of stuff at the federal level really we we need to get to the federal level to undo it or we need the federal level to undo it or for mm -hmm. it to be undone for the federal I, there's a lot of ways you could go down that road but in the meantime what can i do well you have some options even if you can't change the system and this system can regulate certain things around you can make sure like well where's my money Mm -hmm. Do I need to go looking for a local credit union where I am divesting myself, my mm -hmm. money from a national system so I'm not dependent upon it? Now, that doesn't mean that this other local bank can't be regulated around by the FDIC, et cetera, mm -hmm. and so on. But at the same time, you're making a little bit of a move. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, that that's, I think that that's a real option for each of us to look, what, what can I do that's more local? What can I do individually? And then how can I convince other people? I think that this is actually... Um, I think we're pretty ripe for this right now, to be honest, because there has already been a movement of our generations and, and, and you know, the, you know, Gen Z millennials, we've already seen a movement away from big corporatism. Uh, you know, like, yeah, I love, I've had my heyday with Amazon. It was nice. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Everything got shipped to my house, but I, I kind of don't want to do that. I want to go to my local mom and pop shop to do mm -hmm. something else. I feel like we're seeing that trend build as people have had their heyday with the cheap uh, overseas marketplace and all of the mm -hmm. convenience of digital everything and digital technology. And I think people are going, eh, yeah, I don't know. I see all the downsides to this too, or some of the downsides mm -hmm. are, I just want this. I want to be in vogue and I want to, whatever the reasons there has been a shift. And I really think that that's an opportunity to seize upon, Hey, you should do that with your bank too. Mm -hmm. You should do that with this, with that, with the other, which is, you know, it's hard in a world of sofas and chime and all of these nice, fancy digital uh, banking options mm -hmm. where it's like, yeah, but where are they? Right. I, I want to know who the people are. Like, I want to know my local insurance agent. I'd like to know my local bank people. Mm -hmm. I think that that move is really something that each of us can choose to make in every area, kind of examine one at a time. What move can I make to divest from the big system, to take a little bit more power away from them, and then talk to my sphere of influence? Because honestly, you start to see the ripple effects move pretty mm -hmm. quickly. People get dissatisfied with the system. All it takes is one or two more major bank runs. And mm -hmm. I think a bunch of other people are ready to get out. Yeah. Just like Disney has tanked the Marvel universe and a mm -hmm. bunch of people are ready to move on to a different source of entertainment. Right. I think we're right on the edge of that happening to some of the more life-giving, mm -hmm. not the entertainment industry, but the more life-giving things like the financial sector right. of America. And if we are putting our own skin in the game and then telling other people, look what I did, you can do it too. I think we are right on mm -hmm. the edge of that being an actual reality in America yeah. For people to say, yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm with you. Let me go ahead and do it. And then mm -hmm. we ought to be armed with, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Here are the places you can go to find your options. Right. Um, and and that's, I think, it's, I think yeah. it's so important that in the future that we have somebody like Trump, uh, somebody who's willing to fight for what's right in, in a mm -hmm. position of power and many positions of power, uh, be willing to, uh, should there be some shakiness in the system in this way that you're describing and the, the banks start to lose some of their hold, that there be somebody in there willing to use their power to just go in for the kill and gut leftism in whatever way they possibly can. Uh, because I think that doing, doing, destroying leftism is incredibly important. They're only going to continue to dominate if we don't. So I, I don't think there's any other option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I pulled out actually a few of those. If, as, as we start to move this direction and we try to become more, um, um, fleet, light, ready mm -hmm. with answers for other people. I think that it is good to give them the places that give the, uh, that give them options. They give these, these folks who are just now starting to make that transition to give them options. This is mm -hmm. where it becomes really interesting to have uh, some different things. So a, a couple that I pulled out that I wanted to make sure I shared and highlighted. I know it's no secret now, Public Square has become a big deal. Uh, the app where you can go and find like-minded businesses and not just be reliant upon whatever. But Public Square has actually gotten pretty darn big, whether you're looking for products or banks or everything else mm -hmm. or you know whatever business it is. I saw that they, um, a couple of weeks ago, they signed a huge million dollar ad deal with Tucker. Wow. So Tucker, who is the parallel economy of, of news yeah. at this point and has joined forces with Elon, who is kind of becoming the parallel economy mm -hmm. of big tech, 
um, signs a million dollar ad deal with Public Square, the Paragon, you know, parallel economy mm -hmm. people. Um, and there's a huge movement there that has that's been very interesting to see. But Public Square has actually grown quite a bit. I'm not saying to implicitly trust it, but there's a lot of really interesting stuff that has started going on from products and commodities to healthcare um, to financial, you know, industry and banking options, people joining public square. And it's not even just, you know, oh yeah, we're conservative. So we're going to join this. It's, mm -hmm. you yeah, know, we don't believe in that, this radical leftist stuff. So we want to make sure that people know we want, you know, to move back to free market. Mm -hmm. um, we support that as a business. And then you start to run into businesses that are not just, um, uh, you know, they give the appearance of something. I'm not going to call out any names in particular because I have my own ideas, but I don't want to bash anyone. Mm -hmm. But this one of my one of my other practical is you start to look down the list of things like this. You realize like we can't just support companies that are like, yeah, we're selling freedom water and freedom dirt. And we just threw freedom in front of the name of it. Right. No, no. But what does your what commitment does your company have? Right. Really. And then show me the smarts that you've actually adopted. Like, no, I'm going to do this. We're mm -hmm. going to move this direction. I'm not just marketing to conservatives, marketing to the free market parallel economy people. Right. And you start and look, there are a lot of those places that like we market freedom clothes. Right. And then you find, and there's actually several, one of them that constantly pops up on my radar is Origin USA out of Maine. And these guys, when you go and listen to them, it is a, no, no, no. We want to revitalize American industry uh, Amer now I sound like Trump. Listen to industry, American industry, the American industrial complex. Mm -hmm. We want to revitalize American manufacturing again. So their whole thing is, yeah, we make clothes and we've moved from some sport clothes to hunting clothes, to regular clothes, to work clothes, but it is America. Mm -hmm. We source our cotton from America. Is it hard? Yes. Is it expensive? Yes. Is it important? Double yes. Mm -hmm. It must be materials from America. We're going to put it into factories here in America. We're going to hire American hands to do it because if we cannot take care of ourselves on this basic level mm -hmm. of, of sourcing and manufacturing clothing, what are we as a country? Right. And I'm like, I love you. You're awesome. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's a few bucks more than the stuff that I can get from overseas, but oh my gosh, you, you're right. Like we have to do this across the board, guys. We're doing clothes, but you need to do electronics and you need to do semiconductors and you need to do banks and mm -hmm. you need to do this. And I'm like, this is it. These are the people that I want to support. So what do I have to cut? And how much do I have to save to use my money for you? Because this is important. You start going down the list, you realize it's not just the freedom water, freedom dirt people. Right. Um, it is companies that are actually involved and in understanding of where we are and what we must do. And when you get into the public square realm, uh, another one that comes to my mind for for the job market, Red Balloon. You've you've uh, heard some of his. Andrew uh, Crappy Shuts has been on mm -hmm. Ed's program a couple of times. They know their stuff. They understand the whole. Yeah, we you know we don't want a world full of companies that only hire whether out of fear or being a true believer on DEI stuff mm -hmm. and censoring of employees, et cetera, and so on. Like we're looking for companies that are committed to free market stuff. Right. You have an opinion. We have a code of conduct but everything is just the basics and we're not here to shove something down your throat we're not here to silence and move and we're not here to act out of fear of whatever mm -hmm. reprisals or everything so you know red balloon is aggregating jobs public square is aggregating products and mm -hmm. now services as well um there there are a lot of things replatform is another one this is and i'm gonna i'm gonna shut up here and let you bring your final thoughts because i know we're probably approaching about a half hour here there's a company called replatform they have a big uh I hadn't heard of them until this past week or two. Mm -hmm. They have a big um, expo coming up in Vegas. And the whole thing, replatform, is to move and open new. This, they're wanting to do what we do. Um, but they are doing a special event. Because, you know, we've got our Black Friday, Cyber Monday. But they put out a press release. The CEO of replatform, David Ragsdale, said uh, that this Black Friday, Cyber Monday is a challenging paradox uh, for uh, conservatives, freedom-loving Americans. Um, they're shopping extravaganzas, uh, shopping extravaganzas, alluring to a lot of people, but it demands a significant compromise, supporting corporations deeply entrenched in, entrenched in censorship, cancel con uh, culture, companies like Amazon, Netflix, actively persecuting uh, conservative values. And I would say the free market itself. Uh, so it's time for a decisive stance. Let's leverage Uncancel Wednesday, a day uniting Americans to champion silenced brands and challenge pandering corporations. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. Mm -hmm. We're getting a parallel economy for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. How about uncancel Wednesday mm -hmm. when you go and stop spending all of your money with the cheap stuff that's nice to give for Christmas? But what about supporting the people? Like, does, does it matter or not? Mm 
Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is awesome. Like, this is this is super cool. And then sure enough, they're capitalizing off of the hit that places like Target and Disney have taken this year. Hey, mm -hmm. your dollars actually speak. It's just that yeah. they're, it, it, these boycotts never seem successful because not enough people are angry enough to actually do it. Right. When people are angry enough to actually do it, look what happens. Right. You know, Bud Light takes a massive hit of millions and millions and millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And then Yingling is suddenly available everywhere if you want to drink beer and love America and not support this garbage. Mm -hmm. Like all of a sudden, kaboom, there's the market option because the, the there was a will across a huge group of people to move a direction. Mm -hmm. If if there's a will, it will move that way. Right. That's a pretty powerful reminder. So I, I'm excited about all of these options mm -hmm. for arming us to feel more encouraged at that to feel more enraged at the bad people and yeah. like no no i'm, I'm not going to do this anymore i will make whatever sacrifice uh, and change i have to in my family and i'm going to tell other people because when they're ready i'm going to be ready with the here here are your tools mm -hmm. go do it it's not that hard and, uh, and there's a lot of good places i'm going to include a lot in the links but yeah there's a lot of good places and again from from one side to the other that bottom-up approach um whatever industry it is from one industry to the other i mean that I think is an actual viable option. I think we're creating those parallel um, economies. And I think that it's actually coming to some of the bigger industries mm -hmm. that are super entrenched in the bureaucratic state, which right. in itself is a beast that we can't just undo, right. but it's not beyond hope, but it, it's, that's, that's a much more difficult proposition. Yeah. I think it'll, it'll take a, it'll take some special people to uh, be able to disentangle that mess. That's uh, I think that's beyond uh, just voting with our dollars or even with our ballots uh, that takes some, some truly uh, thumatic people getting into positions of power, uh, mm -hmm. which God willing that will occur uh, in 2024 and onwards. Uh, but in the meantime, I think it's good to have have that. Th this is why you need to be on the email list because you're going to get this big list of things that Ryan's talking about of ways that you can actually act on this in the meantime, ways that you can actually practice what we are discussing today, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, ways that you can give your money to people that will use it well. Give your money to people that don't hate you. Give your money to sane people. Uh, and I think I think that's a really good thing. So Maybe some things we just have to stop giving our money to this industry entirely because there isn't anyone sane just yet. Right. Um, but no, that's... <coughs> pardon me. Bottom line is I think that the parallel economies are being achieved in certain areas. Mm. It's going to take a lot more in others. But I think ultimately, whether it's... The, the bottom line for me is, is as a consumer, as a as a participant at the you know low end of the economic system, because mm -hmm. I don't own a business or a giant corporation or anything else. I'm just, I'm a participant in the system. I, I think at the bottom line is there's a, there's some cans, there's some, I'm not sure, but hopefully, but then there's the biggest level of, well, it doesn't matter. I have to, mm -hmm. like, we've, we've got to do this. I've got to participate at these levels of trying to shift. Uh, otherwise, like, w what am I doing? Just participating in the system until it all goes to pot because there's nothing else I can do. So I've mm -hmm. given up No. That's not that's not an American ideal, but right. that's not I, I have to. We have to try. But then you start looking around the field, realizing, oh, there's there are options and it is mm -hmm. working from the bottom up. And some of these, you know, what seems like the unconquerable Leviathan of, of you know, the administrative state, there actually may be ways to, you know, get in and punish, even if you can't from the top down go from the bottom up, you can, you know, get people to throw in monkey mm -hmm. wrenches. I think I think that all of these are not without hope. Right. That's my bottom line. Yeah, well, yeah. I agree. I thought, yeah, I thought this was a pertinent discussion to be having here. We're going into Thanksgiving week, Black Friday, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Cyber Monday, everyone doing Christmas shopping, looking yep. at it early, and then also everyone realizing, you know, money and budgeting through the holiday season. Um, this, this is a big topic that yep. I think that we can all make some pretty drastic changes on, and I think that there's some change to be made. Um, mm -hmm. The parallel economies work. They are working. Yes. We're a, we're a lot different place than two years ago when I first started hearing this term thrown around in mm -hmm. earnest. Like we actually have moved down the line, partly because the crazy people have gotten crazier mm -hmm. and the non-crazy people have built better stuff. Right. And there's actually options. So Right. Well, and uh, speaking of next week, as we close up, have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Right. You will not be seeing us. We will be nope. with our families eating some turkey. Uh, we are not going to be in the Phyllis Schlafly Library. That's right. Um the electronics will be put away. The microphones will not be in our mouths. Turkey legs will be in our mouths, and we will not be uh, here. But uh, we are very grateful for you. We are very grateful for this opportunity mm -hmm. um, to be able to have these discussions. Uh, and uh, I'm thankful that we get to do this together. It's a fun yeah. time every week, and hope that you have a good one with your family and friends and 
uh, whoever you're with next weekend as we celebrate our very unique American holiday. That's another reason you want to get on the email list. It's because Thanksgiving is one of our favorite things. Thanksgiving, Constitution Day. I feel like these are the two that yeah. we just like go ham on because there's such great, rich historical context there. Get on the email list. You'll want to see the uh, Thanksgiving messages we're putting out because there's some really cool stuff that you're going to want to see from history. Yep. So well, we'll see you all in two weeks. Sounds good. Go like, share, subscribe, share the link from today. Get onto the email list at phyllislafley.com and we'll see you then.